Good morning. morning. Welcome to Messiah Lutheran Church on this uh, little chilly Sunday morning. Uh, We're happy to have you uh, here with us in the sanctuary, or if you're worshiping online with us, we're happy to have you as well. Uh, Just a couple of brief announcements. I want to go ahead and start getting you thinking about uh, the fact that we are having a voters meeting, our regularly scheduled fall voters meeting. Uh, That is November 12th after the late service. So start thinking about that as uh, you're making your plans for next month. Uh, We will be electing a slate of candidates and uh, finalizing the ministry plan for next year and talking about the next steps for our ministry expansion campaign as well. So I hope to see everyone who can make that. Again, that's November 12th. Also today, uh, I'm sure that you noticed all of the wonderful quilts that we have here. Uh, We'll be doing a blessing of these uh, a little bit later on in the service. Uh, We have 120, uh, which is over double what we had last year from our Threads of Love team. And uh, we're so thankful for what they're doing. Uh, They are going to be collecting a uh, free will offering in the back at the end of the service to help cover the cost of shipping for these quilts to ship them out to the the places and people that are in need. So if you feel uh, so moved, please uh, be willing to uh, put a a donation in the basket as you uh, leave. And uh, also you could do that online if you do the the online giving. There's a drop down for Threads of Love. You can use that as well. So uh, with that, I have uh, the opportunity to turn it over to Dave Johansson for an announcement. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everybody. I have a a brief announcement about the ministry expansion campaign. Um, As of October 15th, Commitment Sunday, the congregation has received three-year pledge commitments of over $1.3 million. Thanks be to God. I I think some of you have already heard that news, but perhaps some of you have not. And we want to emphasize that this is just the start of the campaign. It's not the end. Uh, Those of you that haven't had an opportunity yet to make a pledge to the campaign, we want to welcome you in. We don't want anyone to feel like they're being left out. So please, uh, please consider that if you haven't done that already. And then also two weeks from now, Sunday, November 5th, is a celebration of First Fruits Giving. And uh, this is an opportunity for us to give the first offering in fulfilling our three-year pledge. Uh, It's a celebration, it's a concept based on Old Testament first fruits giving. And uh, I wanna emphasize that it is voluntary because everyone has a unique plan for fulfilling their three-year pledge. So for the campaign, this is a simple acknowledgement during the Sunday offering time on November 5th to give a first uh, portion of our three-year commitment and uh, a way to signify the beginning of the campaign. It's ultimately a recognition of what God has done and we give thanks for it. Um, Today there are special offering envelopes in the uh, Welcome Center if you'd like to pick one up. Uh, Some also will be mailed to those of you that have already made a uh, pledge. So you'll see those in the mail this week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. One final announcement is that we have the uh, joy and privilege of receiving new members uh, into our congregation. uh, Again, also a little bit later in this service. Uh, Pastor Steve will be leading that. And so we are gonna have a reception afterwards at the end, a very brief reception uh, after service. Uh, for our new members out in the narthex. So just want to make sure that you are aware of that. Say hi to our new members, and uh, and I enjoy looking forward to see what uh, God is going to do in our midst uh, together as the body of Christ. I now invite you to please stand as we sing our opening hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing. sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell, Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Brothers and sisters, each time we come to this altar to confess our sins, it is a declaration of God's glory and mercy shown to us in the marvelous works of salvation won for us in Christ. Let us humbly come before our Father in heaven, repenting of our sins, so we can hear from him again those precious words of forgiveness. In light of making confession, I invite you to either be seated or you may also kneel. We take this moment now for silent personal confession and self-examination. Together we confess, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have given to Caesar the fear, love, and trust, which rightly belongs to you alone, and have failed to submit to your rightly ordered governance. We have acted according to our own selfish desires and placed ourselves as king over our lives. Forgive us on account of Christ, and help us to submit to you above all. Amen. God's word assures us that he gives grace to the humble, and that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, have mercy on us, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may willingly relinquish those things which are temporal and so hold fast 
to the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And now I get the uh, privilege and the opportunity of uh, leading us in the blessing of these quilts. Uh, this is a responsive, and it should be on the screens for you to follow along. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have called us as your own to reach out to our neighbors around the world. Send forth your spirit today to bless these works of our hands. We celebrate being made your children. We give thanks for the variety of gifts you have assembled in these quilts, these quilts and kits, donations of fabric, thread and sewing machines, the faithful people who dye fabric, cut, design, sew, tie and stitch bindings, provide publicity, donate boxes, pack these items, and contribute the money necessary to ship them. We celebrate abiding in your generosity. We give thanks for your spirit, which binds together all who work to make the quilts and kits throughout laughter, shared stories, the joy of heartfelt handcrafting, and the time to reflect on and pray for those recipients. We celebrate abiding in your community. We send forth these quilts and kits, both in your name and as a sign of your love for each recipient, trusting you will use them to be a source of comfort and hope in the midst of disaster and fear, a symbol of Christ's love to those who suffer, and a reminder he or she is a beloved child of God. Almighty God, we pray you would cause these quilts and kits to serve a useful purpose in the life of the recipient, that they may bring warmth in the cold, shelter from sun and heat, a wall for a home, or a carrier for a few precious belongings. May they be a step in recovering one's life and a message of care from someone they will likely never meet. We celebrate abiding in your hope. We remember those who have received our quilts and kits in the past and pray that their lives have returned to stability. We celebrate abiding in your gift of abundant life. Lord, bless the fruits of our labors and the whole mission of Lutheran World Relief, that together we may minister to our neighbors in need. Bless all who give and all who receive, as we are sown together in the unity of faith in Christ Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now continue our worship through the reading of God's word. The Old Testament lesson today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verses 1 through 7. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes in secret places, that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. The epistle lesson today is from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith 
and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the word of the Lord. It is now my joy and privilege to invite our newest members to come forward uh, at this time as we receive them into membership. Over the past six weeks, we've had them in class. Good morning, welcome. And uh, this is the blessed event, the blessed week. Yeah, we'll have you stand right here. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have about as many in the second service as well today. So we will uh, invite you in this morning, and the other group will be here at the 1045 service. Beloved in the Lord, Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. So lift up your hearts now, therefore, to God, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? If so, say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. And do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? If so, say, yes, I renounce them. Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? If so, say, yes, I believe. And do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? If so, say, I do. do. And do you uh, intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? If so, say, I do by the grace of God. And do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? If so, say, I do by the grace of God. And do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than to fall away from it? If so, again, say, I do by the grace of God. Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? If so, say, I do. do. And will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts that God has given you? If so, say, I will with the help of God. God. It's too early to make up the uh, responses, right? So I'm glad I was here to give them to you. And at this time, I also want to turn to the congregation. You have heard their uh, confession and their promise to this congregation. So I invite you as Messiah uh, Church, 
Will you support our new members and the work of this ministry that our gracious God has given to us with your prayers and the gifts that God has given to you? If so, say, I will with the help of God. Thank you. And so now, upon this, your confession of faith, I acknowledge uh, publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to His Church. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in this one true faith in the fellowship of this congregation as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Always, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, the one who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So I invite you into membership, Roland, Carol, Dick, Marianne, and Vanita. Welcome. Welcome to you all. Please join me in welcoming them. You are welcome to return to your seats. Unless as new members you want to begin leading the worship service. <laughs> Surprise. I remember when I joined the church, uh, they immediately had me doing children's messages. <laughs> That's riding a wild horse. <laughs> we continue our time of worship in God's Word with our memory verse this morning, and so I invite you to please recite it along with me. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1.6. Please rise now in honor of the Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle Jesus in his words. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully. And you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore, render to Caesar the things that are, the, the things that are Caesar's, and to God the, thing, the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you now to please join me in confessing our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We invite the children to please come forward. And there are a few kids here today. Come on up. One of the things that I really like to do is play cards. I like to play cards. Should we play a card game this morning? Well, it's, it's called Real Life. All right. Everybody gets 10 cards. Natalie, those are yours over there. Oops, there's one for you. Tell me when you have 10. Okay. You got 10? Four? Okay. Claire, you're just going to have to sit with us and... Maybe Natalie will share. How many more do you need, Gabe? Two, Two three. Eight. Okay. Okay. So here's the. Is that it? Ten. Okay. Good. So of your ten cards, let's just see. We'll put more in the deck here. Of your ten cards, in the game of real life, God says, "Would you give me back one, please?" Okay. All right. Ready? Okay. Oh, that's a pretty one. Can I get one from you, Evelyn? We'll put it in this pile right here. Okay, good. Uh-huh. There's one. Natalie, can you give me one? Oh, thanks. Oh, it's an ace. Nice. Very good. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Claire. Aw. And then we'll shuffle these up a little bit. And then this thing called government. We have one in America, right? It says... Could you give me two of those? Okay. Hey, there's one. Okay. Ooh, you gave me big ones. Good. Diamonds. That's funny. That's kind of a, a funny little thing right there, isn't it? Okay. There's one. For, okay, thank you. And you still owe me some taxes, Evelyn. Okay. All right. That's good. So you gave it to the government. Now, how does, what does the government do with that money you just gave it? They spend it on stuff. Yeah, like the roads and stuff. But you know, here's what I know about the government, is that sometimes the government just spends it like crazy. And it's not always on what I want it to be on, right? So do I still have to give my card to the government? Yes. Thanks, Claire. Why do we have to do that? when they just spend it on lots of other stuff. And maybe that's how you feel about your church, too. They're just spending it on all kinds of stuff. Why do we have to do that? We're spending it for God. Oh, Izzy, you are right on the mark. We are spending it to God, on God, right? We're not really giving it to Messiah, even though they might be the ones who are divvying out the dollars. We are giving it to God. What about government? 
they are giving sometimes to other people. Sometimes they kind of hold some back for themselves too. I think yeah. mm -hmm, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, could be. But why do then? Why do we have to give if they might be a little selfish? Oh, if we don't give, they're going to come and get it anyway, aren't they? You are right, buddy. But you know what? In today's gospel reading, we heard Pastor Reed that God says, give to Caesar, and our Caesar is the American government. What is the American government? Stop fussing about taxes. Just give it, and don't worry about it. But it's not easy to do. Thanks, Natalie. You are awesome. I appreciate you picking those up. Well, let's say a prayer about that. It's really a prayer about being able to listen to the authorities over us and being obedient. Do you have any authorities in your life? Who tells you what to do, Gabe? Mom and dad. Mom and dad. Do, you, do you always like what they tell you to do? Mm. Why do you do it then? Because <laughs> if you don't do it, you're going to get in trouble. But we do it because it's, it's the way to be obedient, right? It's the way to be obedient, and God tells us to be obedient. Well, let's pray about that this morning. Claire, can you fold your hands and bow your head? Thank you, Evelyn. Dear God, thank you for all that you give us. Teach us to give back to you and to the government with a heart that is obedient to your word. We thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, should we try to put our, our wealth in our card deck again? Thanks, guys. Gabe, you want to hand these out? Thanks. Thank you. Can I have two? Yes, you can. Absolutely. There's one, and here's another one. There's one for Claire. Good job. She's got, she can have two. Thanks, sweetie. <laughs> All right. So I can tell by some of the answers that the kids were giving in the uh, children's message, they have an acute understanding of the law as it relates to honoring your father and your mother. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble if I don't. That's the first use of the law, a curve, right? All of you catechism students, both young and old. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to begin by talking to you about questions. Jesus faced a question in our gospel text today and it was a, a loaded question. Now loaded questions uh, assume something behind them in the asking with the intent to get to a certain outcome oftentimes. Uh, they can be innocuous. It can be something as simple as if you're in a store looking at, at clothing and uh, on a rack and the salesperson comes by and says, now which color are you planning to purchase today? Assuming and trying to prime your mind that you are in fact going 
to walk out of that store with some of the clothing and a little bit less money, trying to get you to decide which color. Or they can be a little bit, uh, a little bit more perilous, shall we say, when uh, maybe in the heat of an argument, a wife asks her husband, just how long have you been ignoring me? To which there's the assumption that he has been. And there is no way to answer a question like that that's going to come out in your favor, guys. We know that. Because if you say when you've been ignoring, so you have been ignoring me, haven't you? And if you deny it, you're just lying to me, right? If any guys have figured out how to handle that, talk to the other guys so that we can all work together to build one another up. In our gospel text, as I said earlier, we see an example of a loaded question pointed to Jesus in a setup which appears to be a no-win situation. Our Lord's answer, however, amazed his opponents and is still instructive for us today. Now there is so much content within these eight verses to address it all in one sermon that would be impossible. Uh, so I intend to focus on, uh, for this sermon, on verses 21 and 22. But we do need to briefly look at this loaded question which comes in verse 17. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Now understand, with uh, these, the Herodians and the disciples of the Pharisees, the Pharisees weren't even bold enough to come and do this themselves. They sent their disciples to do their dirty work for them. Uh, either yes or no to this question will be unacceptable as an answer. You see, if Jesus answers, yes, you must pay taxes, the Pharisees' disciples will mark Jesus as a traitor, a traitor to his Jewish brothers and sisters for teaching publicly that they must be subservient to that awful nation of Rome. However, if Jesus answers, no, it's not lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, then these Herodians, these are the followers of Herod, the puppet client king installed by Rome. Well, they will say that he is inciting a rebellion against Rome, something that Rome does not tolerate and would be met with force. Notice also that these are the same two offenses which Christ would be later charged with when being brought to Pontius Pilate just days later. So after a bit of back and forth, Jesus ultimately responds in a way which seems a whole lot like not responding. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Now both groups that are assembled asking the question can hear this answer or non-answer as, as vindication for them. For the Herodians, well, Caesar mints the coins and imposes the tax so the obligation to pay the tax seems to be supported. Meanwhile, the disciples of the Pharisees can also hear Jesus say, well, render to God the things that belong to God. The question then is, can both of these be true? You see, the questioners want Jesus to choose sides. They're pitted one against the other. Instead, what Jesus does is reframe the question. Because the question behind the loaded question is not one of whether paying taxes to a secular government is good or appropriate, but rather one of who's in charge here? The answer, the obvious answer, God is indeed in charge, does not negate the fact that the Roman government has legitimate temporal authority. 
The question on taxes is what's called a false dichotomy. Two things which at first seem incompatible with one another, yet when investigated can be brought into harmony or agreement with one another. From our reading in Isaiah earlier this morning, when Yahweh says to his anointed Cyrus, who is without a doubt a pagan king, when Yahweh says to him, Cyrus, I have given you power and authority. I call you, I name you, and I equip you. Even though you do not know me, we should recognize God's granting of authority in what we as Lutherans like to call the left hand kingdom, the secular realm, which is just as valid as the right hand kingdom or the spiritual realm. Luther's explanation of the fourth commandment in the small catechism supports this by showing us honoring our father and mother means serving and obeying other authorities. An understanding which he expands on in the large catechism where he writes, for all authority, all other authority, is derived and developed out of the authority of the parents. So to uphold the fourth commandment authority of kings and rulers is really an extension of the first. Fearing, loving, and trusting God who raises up and lays low the temporal authorities above all other things. The problem for the Pharisees and for the Herodians is that neither of them were willing and able to do both of these well, to honor God and to honor Caesar. The problem for us is neither do we. Irrespective of if you share the same side of the political aisle as the current government, God calls you to obey the laws of your country where they do not come into conflict with God's law. Doesn't mean you have to like it, but you do have to obey it. But we are to obey God above what the, the government tells us to do when they do come into conflict. For example, you can and should refuse to personally take part in an elective abortion procedure because it violates the fifth commandment, thou shall not murder. But that doesn't absolve you of paying taxes because the state funds abortions with the taxes you paid. That's not on you, that's on them. The capricious attitude we as Americans have when and where it regards to submitted, submitting to authority that we dislike, the lengths that we go to find loopholes to justify our disobedience, the scheming that occurs behind closed doors in politicians' offices, in corporations' boardrooms, and even at kitchen tables in households across this nation is no different than the Pharisees who plotted to entangle Jesus in his words by not doing what God has called us to do. It is sinful. It is shameful. It demands repentance for the sake of our nation and for our individual souls. None of us fulfills this commandment to render unto God what is God's perfectly. And all of us deserve judgment for our failure to do so. Yet thanks be to God who sent his son the Christ to do what we could not, to submit fully and perfectly to the Father's will, who in obedience willingly suffered and died on the cross at the hands of the Roman government, delivering us who believe from the wrath to come. No loaded question could trick him. No deceitful temptation could lure him away from the work which our Father in heaven had given him to do. And so Christ lived sinlessly. He died obediently, was resurrected gloriously, and his gospel has come to us not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. From the moment of your baptism and every time we gather and receive his forgiveness 
through absolution and the Lord's Supper, God is showing you again and again, brothers and sisters, you are loved by God, and he has indeed chosen you to be his people, chosen you to be his treasured possession, bought not with gold or silver or tax money, minted with a king's likeness, but by the holy precious blood and innocent suffering and death of the king of kings himself. He has done this that you may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This this is most certainly true. So how do you and I render rightly? That's the question. How do we live under him in his kingdom? Let Christ have his way with you. Not just today, not just in this hour that we spend in worship, but every hour of every day. Day. Submit to the things the Holy Spirit living in you is enabling you to do. Confess your sins so that you can, by faith in Christ, receive his grace and mercy. Gladly hear the word proclaimed and study it yourselves with others. Wednesday night, I'll give you as a great opportunity to do this with your brothers and sisters of the faith. Avail yourself of the sacraments when and where it is rightly administered, and respect the authority he has ordained, living peaceably so far as it depends on you, as Paul writes in Romans. You get the opportunity to do these things by the power of the Holy Spirit, spending your treasures not on your own pleasures, but for the sake of building up the kingdom of God. I look forward to seeing how God is going to fulfill and to use the over $1.3 million of pledges to expand ministry at Messiah that he has enabled us to give. Pray without ceasing for our leaders and for our church and for our world. God knows and you know that they need it now more than ever. And above all, to render rightly means to trust the God who created and delivered you, who still sustains you, and on the last day will bring the work which he has started to completion. In the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, I am sure of this, that he will do it. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. We now have the opportunity to return back to God a portion of what he has given to us in the tithes and offerings of the church.
Thanks be to God for his gift of song and for the children uh, who are participating in it. Having heard God's word proclaimed, let us now turn in faith and pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people around the world according to their needs. Let us pray. God of our salvation, you deliver your Son's work through your word in the power and in the Holy Spirit. Strengthen the church's pastors to proclaim your truth. Increase the faith of all who hear, that they may respond in love, steadfast in their hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all truth, from the rising of the sun to its setting, you make known your salvation in Christ. Bless fathers and mothers as they teach their children your word and your ways. Let them know that there is no God besides you, and so rejoice in your faithfulness. We also pray for our families of the month or of the week, uh, for Timothy, Linda, Daniel, Sarah, Rachel, Andrew, and Jonathan Ponsetti, for Jason, Carrie, Aiden, and Zachary Powers, for Joe and Nelda Price, for Matthew Price, for Naeem, Janine, Gabriel, and Isabella Cossum. We also pray for our preschool families of the month. Let them know you in a special way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you appointed Cyrus as your instrument to return your people to Jerusalem. Uphold the authorities of our nation in wisdom and integrity, that we might live in peace with a good conscience. Grant that they would make good use of the taxes we render and lead us to recognize them as your instruments, honoring them as you command. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our help comes from you who made heaven and earth. You preserve our life. Have mercy on all who are afflicted. Keep them from all evil and shade them from all harm. We pray especially for those with health concerns, for Pastor Bill Olson, for Jean Olson, for Stephanie Airy, and for Ursula Rhine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks uh, for those new members who are joining us um, at Messiah today, for Pam Averill, for Benita Belingit, for Jonathan and Carrie Federwitz, for Dick and Marianne Nagley, for Anthony and Lauren Rowan, for Heath Weiss, and for Roland and Carrie Yount. We give you thanks that you have indeed enlarged our numbers this day, and we ask that you would continue uh, to enliven our faith in theirs as we seek to serve you all the more as we see the day approaching. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, guard those who travel, keep their going out and their coming in, protect them from every trouble, prosper their journey according to your will, and make their homecomings joyful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we also ask that you would guard and guide all those who are in harm's way. For those uh, who are living in Ukraine and who, and who live in Israel and Palestine, that you would bring into war there and into wars in all places, that peace might reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. True and living God, you have turned us from idols to serve you and to live. As we await your Son's return in glory, Grant that we would faithfully receive him at this altar when it is opened, and we do so with repentance and joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are now bold to pray the prayer he taught his disciples by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please rise and receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We now sing our closing hymn.
invite you to join us in the narthex for a reception for our new members. Now go in peace, join Jesus on his mission and the power of his spirit. Thanks be to God.